A 92nd minute goal from Luke Stone was enough to give the Magpies all three points at Shortwood this afternoon against a team who at least until today were serious contenders for the playoff places. Uh, Steve Cuss's injury problems are well documented uh, but he was able to put out a, a decent team we had um, Mark Gamble missing through a family illness, John Blake still suffering his hamstring, Adam Costello still with his wrist in plaster. So the back four was uh, was Tom Biles at left back, Scott Arnold at right back with um, Billy Maybury and Ian Oliver in, in, in the middle of the defence there. Steve pushed Jamie Davidson up front to partner uh, Luke Stone and in midfield Sam Griffin, Luke Holmes, um, Franklin Clark and James Stokoe, a very strong looking midfield. On a beautiful afternoon here in Gloucestershire uh, in front of a, a very disappointing crowd, the game kicked off and it, it, it really was a pretty even game throughout. James Stokoe had a, had a shot just fired wide on 15 minutes and then on half an hour, around about the half hour mark, the home side could have taken the lead. Uh, a ball was uh, cleared off the Wimborne line, it might have been uh, Jason Harville's foot that sent it over the bar, and then two minutes later a shot uh, from a shortwood forward went just over the bar, and then in 40, 41 minutes shortwood had a, another decent chance but the shot was dragged wide of the post. Sam Griffin was looking sharp down the right wing at this point and causing all sorts of problems to the home defence. Half time came though, nil-nil. Uh, Second half was a little bit uh, it was, wasn't quite up to the standard of the first half. Uh, pitch, as it dried out, got a little bit bumpier, as pitches do at this time of year, and it was more and more difficult to, 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 to control. The one, one moment in particular when Luke Stone was through and the ball must have bubbled up at least two and a half feet almost into his stomach, <laughs> and even he could only laugh about it. Um, in 52 minutes, a defensive mix-up at the back, one of the few of all day from, from the Magpies, presented Shortwood with a chance, but uh, the Shortwood strikers today did not have their shooting boots on, that's for sure. Sam Griffin shot wide on 70 minutes and Wimborne were very much in the game at this point. 73 minutes, I should have mentioned of course the key moment in the first half, uh, Wimborne awarded a penalty um, from a what looked like a fairly innocuous challenge on Luke Stone in the first half. He got up and took the penalty and a decent shot but it was well saved by the shortwood keeper. To his credit Luke uh, never let his, his, his head go down after that. Um, but that looked as if it was going to cost us three points until the last minute. Anyway back to the second half. Um, a defensive mix-up and then Griffin shot wide on 70th minute and uh, Wimborne very much in it. On 73 minutes Wimborne might have had another penalty when uh, Sam Griffin and a defender went to ground and the defender clearly handballed the, the ball while on the ground but the referee couldn't see it. I say at this stage the pitch was getting extremely bumpy as the, as the sun dried it out. On 81 minutes Jason Harville was called to make a, a, a really good save after a corner was cleared. Nobody closed down the second ball and he was able to get a shot, unleash a shot from about 20 yards that Jason pushed, pushed round the corner. Two minutes later, um, Jamie Davidson got the ball on the right and his fierce drive across goal almost was turned in by Luke Stone who was just a fraction short of meeting the ball. Anthony Waters came on for Luke Holmes who had had a super game on 87 minutes and the game looked to be heading for a certain no score draw until the 92nd minute when Luke Stone was released down the down down the right the right flank. He came inside and from a really acute angle unleashed a super shot, beat the keeper and went in just beat the, the far post to go into the net. Very little time for Shortwood to come back after that and the ref when the referee blew it was all three points to the magpies. So there's some super performances out there for Wimborne today. For me, James Stokoe was the man of the match. Luke Holmes had another really, really good game. It's hard to believe his age, such a mature performance, and he absolutely gave his all until he was substituted on the 87th minute when Ant Waters came on. And of course, we can't, we can't not talk about uh, Luke Stone. His, fir his, 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 his first full debut for, for Wimborne, and he looked every inch as if he'd been playing in the Southern League for a number of years. 
didn't let the penalty miss get him down, ended up getting us all three points with that really super finish. All in all, it's been a good day here in Gloucestershire. Next up for the Magpies, we've got another tough away trip to Mangotsfield next Saturday. There'll be a coach going, give me a call if you want to be on it. I've got Steve with me after today's 1-0 win uh, at Shortwood United. Steve, the goal took a long time coming, but it was worth it in the end. Yeah, I thought we got ourselves into plenty of good positions today and um, didn't quite find that final pass or that shot on goal and it took to the 92nd minute, as you say, to uh, for us to find that, that touch. But absolutely delighted for, for Luke because obviously he had the misfortune of missing the penalty in the first half. He's trying to make an impression at this level and... Uh, he didn't let his head drop and he kept on getting in the right areas and that's a, that's a sign of a really good striker for me and uh, you know we're absolutely delighted he's got his goal and three points for us. To me he looked just as impressive today in 90 minutes as he did in these 30 minutes as Bridgewater. He, he certainly does not look like a step seven player. No, he's no, got any... skill, he's got pace. Yeah, he's got, he's got that, that, that skill, he's got that, he did well, particularly well. Uh, I was pleased with his back to goal today. I thought mm -hmm. he looked strong mm -hmm. up against um, you know, strong centre-halves. But the minute you can get him facing the goal and, and running, and defenders just won't like it. Mm -hmm. And you know it was a pass in there, and he was running onto it, and mm -hmm. it looked like he just taking it a little bit wide. But you know that's a true marksman. He found the bottom corner. Mm -hmm. No point scoring goals if you let them in at the other end. Though, and I thought the defence looked solid. You moved Ian Oliver in to partner Billy Mabry at the back with Tom Biles at left back. He's he stepped in a few times there this season. Yeah, I thought I've said in the change rooms there. You know exactly that. You know, there's no point scoring in the 92nd minute if you haven't kept a clean sheet. So full credit to everybody for the way we defended. We worked on training on Thursday about pressing and making it difficult. And um, pitches get bobbly this time of the year. Mm. This one was another one today. And if players can play off a bobbly pitch under pressure, then they're going to you know have to play very well. But you know, I thought we defended very well, and you know, a special mention to, to Tom Biles because you know Tom's been terrific for me all season. You know, he hasn't been a regular, but every time he comes in, he, he'll play right back, centre half, centre mm -hmm. midfield, left left back today, and he's been outstanding. He was up against a, a tricky wide player there, and they ended up taking him off, which is a compliment to his defending. And uh, you know, once again, he's come in, and um, you know, he never lets us down. And for the first time, you were able to partner Franklin Clark and James Stoko in midfield, and, and that, that area, the, the team looked very solid. It's probably like a, a you know the, the perfect combination. You've got Franklin who wants to, to bomb on and run box to box and get in there, and, you, and you've got James who wants to get on the ball and uh, sit there and play. And uh, they looked really good that combination today. I took a bit of a chance and played four four two, and mm -hmm. you know we wanted to, to wanted to get um, two strikers up there today with with. Um, Franklin running in behind them, mm -hmm. and um, you know I thought that worked very well. And James Stoke was excellent. And, you know mm -hmm. he controls the game. I think it was in that that last minute as well as positioning to clear the ball, mm -hmm. where again you know mm -hmm. he, he read the game very well. He knew where the header was going to come in, and he clears it. And it's those little things that, like I say, a lot of people don't see that go missing. But James does a lot of that kind of tidying up work that yeah. we need in a team if we're going to have four or five that are bombing forward all the time. Yeah, yeah James was my was my man of the match, and I, very close behind him. Uh, Luke Holmes, who had another super. Game. Yeah, it's, it's all about getting those front players on the ball for me because when they get on the ball, they all look terrific. You mm -hmm. know, Sam Griffin, mm -hmm. Jamie Davison, Luke, Luke Stone, Luke Holmes, and Luke just gets on that little half turn that I've talked about before, and he's he's a, he's a tricky player to play against mm -hmm. because if you go diving into him, he'll roll you and go round you. Um, but he gets on the half turn and uh, he calls them a threat all afternoon. Mm -hmm. No criticism of Shortwood here, but the pitch, as a lot of pitches are at this time of the year, was was bobbly, and it doesn't, it really doesn't suit the likes of Sam Griffin's game. But I, I thought Sam did awfully well. To, yeah. he wins a lot of balls in the air as yeah. well. Oh, he's it, very so. good in the air, Sam. And uh, you know, it was, I said said to all the players, you know, it was going to be that we got ourselves into some fairly good positions without finding that bit of quality. It needed one bit of quality, and uh, you know, Sam, you know, persevered all afternoon in trying to get do the right things and. At half time, that was the message really. I said, Look, it's nil nil, don't change what we're doing, we're causing them problems, mm -hmm. keep doing it, keep getting out to Sam, keep playing to Luke in the hole and Jamie in there, and then stretching with Stoner's pace. But mm -hmm. you know, Sam did exceptionally well this afternoon in terms of, of, of our, our shape and getting out to him and, and causing him a problem. Can you give us an update, another update on the invalids? I think Costello, um, <laughs> yeah, well, Matt Campbell, John Bleak, uh, Jack Lupton, yeah, how are they all doing? Probably got a long list now. Mm. It's, uh, I mean, Adam's on the bench today, but he's, yes. he can't play. No, <laughs> no. He can't play. So, uh, in effect, we had two subs today mm -hmm. uh, with young Anthony and, uh, um, and Roasty there. But, you know, there's, there's an injury list and um, not too many of them are, are due back. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt Campbell will have a chance for next week, I'm hopeful. Um, but... Uh, John Blake probably no, uh, Jack Lumpton no. Um, so you know we've got we've we've got those problems. But 
you know, we, we, we've come out here and shown a load of energy today. The 11 that started, they're on the knees. You know, you can mm -hmm. see in the last mm -hmm. few minutes, we've actually run them into the ground. So, you know, we have to concentrate on the players that we've got and try and get those that are injured back as quick as we can because it, it will help us. Steve, please go back at the dressing room and thank the lads for their efforts today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, Steve.